Welcome to Who Does Rolls, um, Expo Regurgitated Part 3. Um, I'm Mike B, here we go. Here's our day three of the Expo, of what went on there with me, myself and I. Um, day three again, I snuck in to the, um, the halls a little bit earlier, uh, because, well, why not? Uh, just have a scooch around, so had a look. Saw bears, uh, suddenly dawned on me a day three that I hadn't actually seen bears um, other than in passing. Bears was busy. Um, and said, I will put a pin in it. I'm going back, Bears, come and see you. And you know what? It's never never did. I'm sorry, Bears. I really am. Uh, but I hear good stuff, because I think some of the boys went to your stand, and I think Charlie would have definitely gone to your stand. We'll catch up later. Sorry. It was busy, wasn't it? Uh, New Earth is really still a thing. Luda Ratty, whatever their name is. There. So New Earth is a, a game that I, I have around here somewhere. We're gonna, at some point, we will play it. Because um, I picked it up for like a fiver and it's terrible. And there's a whole BGG rant from the designer. If you go to BGG, there's a rant regarding ratings in games. Uh, and the designer just, boy, did they double down and dig themselves a big hole. If you've got a spare hour or so, go to BGG, look um, for New Earth and look for the, the thread. It's locked, but it's a good read of um, ratings in games, I think it's called. There's someone who rated the game a one and, and it just, it, it, wow quite the adventure. Um, anyway, that was there, and as you can see, it was popular as ever. Uh, then um, I mooched around, I saw Magnificent uh, Bar Stars, which I was passing by, it looked quite cutie, and I was passing, 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 and then I halted, because out of the corner of my eye, I saw Mischief Afoot, um, and I had a glance at it. Um, so what caught my attention was this um, unfortunately shaped rabbit. Um, and it, it looks like a base, it's going to Kickstarter soon. I quite like the aesthetic art design of it. It looks a little bit via Rugrats, that style, if you get, if you get where I'm coming from. Um, but it looked cutesy in that, but also had the naughtiness in there, and, and definitely made me chuckle. Didn't play the game, but did look at it. They're coming to Kickstarter, um, just because they grabbed my attention, I had to pause and stop. Then we had a demo of, with Mark McKinnon, the guy from um, uh, Wreck and Ruin, his new, currently work in progress, which is the Wardens of Volvergard. I can't pronounce it, Mark. Change the name. Um, too many W's in it. Um, so it's his ode to the boss bat battler. Um, essentially a, a well raid boss fight, um, definitely a, a sliver or more of Kingdom Death Monster in there and a chunk of Gloomhaven. Um, of you in this kind of tactical skirmish game of a group of you trying to take down some monster hunter, trying to take down these big beasties and with them escalating it bigger and bigger as they go. So we had a play at the first level, we a giant big piggy. Um, there was four of us on it, there was me, Tony, Jamie, and Mark jumped in on with that, and we had a crack at it. I played a tank, which I've never played tanks in World of Warcraft, I was terrible at it. Um, I redeemed myself in this. Uh, Jamie was a squishy uh, DPSC type range thing that decided to get in close to the piggy and got flattened. Um, it's got a lot going on. There's an awful lot of mechanisms going on here, but it kind of works really smoothly when we played it here. You get a deck of cards that are like your Gloomhaven up top and bottom uh, abilities that you use. Either one's kind of attack and one's defense, and you pick and choose either of them. And they have different effects that either manipulate your deck or you can link them up for attacks. So you can sort of play all four cards out and take the attack numbers for the tops of them and then use the ability of the one top card. Uh, or likewise hold them back and use them to react to stuff. Uh, I like the idea of the, the beasts, the creatures having different abilities and powers and things as you go along. It worked quite well. The eye of the eye of the pig was working very well. It chased around, it was a starling, it was trampling us. One Mark's character got caught on the, the tusks of it, it was dragged around the arena. It was seat of your pants, it was fun, it was entertaining, uh, and we beat it just uh, and I was left going, I really enjoyed what it did. I, it played really smoothly, it played really well. Um, all of it's cool. I think he's got a solid, solid game there. I think he's got definitely something there which looks a lot of fun. We didn't play anything else. He showed me some of the other stuff. He's got lined up like, like slime monsters and poisons and stuff. And it's definitely got legs to have some really cool stuff in that box. If my big critiques of it are a couple of things. Number one, Art and design of it, the graphic design is kind of all right. Uh, I feel like if it, if it had a really decent graphic design polish on it, on the boards, uh, and the minis look kind of cool, the cards give them a real polish up and all that. And the other thing I think you're really missing at this point, although it might be there, um, one of the things you're doing is you're attacking the beasts and you're getting loot off of them, which you take back to the local village. 
trade in to get weapons. Now I think pretty much all this works is you've got a bunch of tokens, you go there and there's a deck of cards, you trade them in and you get stuff. What I think is missing for this is a story, is, a, is some thematics. If you could bolt into this kind of like this, this campaign-y story going on whilst you're going off and hunting these monsters and then going back to the village and getting that real kind of buzz of getting loot, the good stuff, uh, and trading in your ancient artifacts and just having something going on there that adds a bit of thematics to the game, a bit of theatrics to it, builds this world. I think you'd have an absolute fucking belt of a game um, because the, people like the loot. That's it. The great tech of the monsters leveling up and doing all that, and, and the good level lap track as well. If that's in there, or if it can come along, I think having the real good level up and the village and this thematics tied into this cracking monster battler game, you want a winner. Um, I think I don't know what the plans are. I don't know how soon he's going to go. I don't know what he's going to do. If it hits as it is at the moment, uh, I still think it's a solid game. I think it's a solid monster battler game, but it will always be a, a solid monster battler game that I really wish looked prettier and had more theming to it. But we'll see. I mean, it's still work in progress, but on the whole, it's, it's a cracker. It's really good. Um, I really enjoyed what it did. It did that fight against a creature in the middle of the thing and I was having different classes and tactics and all that, all of that on the tin, it nailed. Just maybe. Give us a bit more of story. Give us a bit more of the, the world. Give us a bit more of interest in that uh, and the kit and the stuff we're upgrading and some real good cool bling. And then you're onto a winner all day long. Um, so there we had a look at that. Um, then we had a look at Zuli was one of the last things I saw, which is kind of my, it was a, really my kind of hidden gem of the show. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Real basic, 15 quid, I think it was, a pack of cards. Um, it looks cute, but it isn't cute. It looks it looks lovely, but it will take your arm off. Um, it is a drafting, set collecting area placement kind of thing. You're building this park, different environments that you lock down, then you can put different creatures in them, and you need maybe a rat, a aquatic for aquatic creatures, and they are different multiplications, or the carnivores can't be mixed with... Um, with Corolla, Corolla bears, anyway, all of that. It looks really cutie, but it isn't. It isn't that. It's it's quite a quite a vicious game, uh, and it was really for an inexpensive card game. It's kind of cool. I think. Well, I have spoke to the um, the guys on the stand. The guys on the stand there. You know, it's, they had a winning, lovely, lovely game. Um, I think they were great. The art choices on it because it kind of easily passable as being oh, it's a kids game when it's not. Uh, so I presume if they do a second edition, they might, might do something about that. But as it stands, it's a really solid little game. Um, it's from, what's that name? Uh, well, Unfringed Things. Unfringed Things at Unfringed Things. I'll put it on the text. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun, lovely looking, naughty card drafting game. I will say that. And it was definitely probably one of the highlights towards the end of the show for me. Uh, wish I'd found it on the first day because I would have played it probably every evening throughout the show. Uh, regrets. So what, I mean, big regrets is, did I miss stuff? Did I miss anything good? I, the big thing I missed and I really didn't get a chance to see or play or do anything was high and low, which is the new one for the designer of Archipelago. They were at the back end of the stall. Nothing was, this is the big issue of the expo. When you get to Gen Con or you get to even Origins Point, but Gen Con or Essen, there's a buzz of built. People are expecting uh, or waiting for these named things. Whereas the expo always seems to hit so early in the day, there is no buzz. Uh, not that I'm aware of. No, I don't think there was any buzz about high and low until the expo. Uh, and then only during the expo, I got told a couple of times to go and see that, uh, and I missed it. Um, so I, I am interested because it kind of looks like Populous, the board game. It's supposed to play this big 4X game in about a couple of hours. Whether it work or not, I don't know. Archipelago is a game I really enjoy. Ben owns it. We played it a good few times. It's a good meaty sort of game with a good mix of stuff going on with a bit of you and a bit of Maritrash. So if there's any of that going on in this, more it does look cool. Uh, so it's going to Kickstarter. We will see. Uh, I would wish I could have seen more. I wish I could have seen um, more of Stone Sword stuff. It would have been quite cool to actually sit down and play Sinjutsu and just play more stuff. I mean, the stuff you see and you go, well, God, I missed that. God, I missed that. On the whole, it was great to be back to the expo. Um, it felt like it was lacking in some ways for some of the more big names there. But it was still a great show, and it was great to see the peeps I know very well. It was great to have a look around it, really. It was a weird feeling leaving Expo, having not purchased myself a game at all. 
it was weird. It's the first time I've ever done it. I don't know what that says at the moment. I mean, I, I, I kind of the argument is I got plenty of games. I had my father's work away from me when I got home. Was there a need for anything else? Probably wasn't. Nothing blew me away enough um, that made me go, oh, I want that. I mean, the only thing I'd been on the fence for was um, uh, the turn to Dark Tower. If I'd seen that and I'd had the money, I would have had that in a heartbeat. I didn't have the money. <laughs> we did see it, though. And Tony even was, like, developing a Twitch regarding that as well. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, really, I mean, I saw a lot of stuff, played a lot of stuff, and a lot of it was fun, but nothing uh, was enough to make me go... Oh. That's for me. That's my game. Other than maybe Zulia, if I'd spot that earlier, I would have picked it up. Uh, but there you go. That was it. I did all the stuff. Uh, that was our expo for this year. I look forward to next year. Maybe I might do a live show next year. I think I might. Maybe I should come out of retirement and do a bit of bit of showage. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, great to see it. Again, as always, I miss stuff. Um, I'll get prepared next year. We'll do more video next year and I'll be prepared and we'll hit the ground running and we'll produce something semi half assed there's a possibility. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and patronise us. All the stuff, all you new peoples I've seen out there. Lovely to see all you and your new games. Uh, maybe we'll catch up down the road. Uh, until then, this has been Who Des Rolls. This has been The Expo. I'm exhausted. It's been a long weekend. Uh, I'll see you soon.